Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host James, also known as the Dark Knight of Thrones. Today we're going to go over five brand new mods for Skyrim Special Edition. All of the mods mentioned in this video are less than two weeks old at the time of this upload and already have the DKOT channel's seal of approval. One of the things that has kept Skyrim so fresh for eight years, besides grinding up Ice Wraith teeth, is that new mods are constantly hitting the Nexus, continuing to improve and expand upon our favorite modern RPG. So without any further ado, here are five brand new mods in Skyrim SE in December of 2019. Hey YouTube, play my theme song. First up we have Guafi's Forge. I've always known that I needed this mod, and someone finally made it for me. The mod author, listed on your screen, created two versions of this forge replacement, one that matches the vanilla Skyrim stone mesh, and another in 4K textures that's quite unique, yet still seemingly blends right into the atmosphere, giving it that lore-friendly feel. Instead of wondering why hot metal sparks aren't hitting you in the face as you forge 1000 iron daggers, you can now rest assured that a true stonesmith put together something a little closer to life. While the 4K resolution version is stunning in every way, I do personally prefer the vanilla as the stone matches the other stones used in the building of the holes. Combine it with the static mesh improvement mod, and you'll be left wondering why Bethesda didn't just make it look a little more like this in the first place. Guafi's Forge adds an element of immersion, and for that, it gets my resounding thumbs up. And while you're at the forge, take a moment to smith yourself a brand new weapon. One that, in the context of medieval fantasy, makes a lot more sense if you're trying to capture any aspect of historical accuracy. So use Guafi's Forge to make yourself one of Maul's One-Handed Hammers. When Warhammers were commonly used as battlefield weapons, they weren't typically the two-handed pendulum swings that we see in Skyrim. What we call a Warhammer was typically a one-handed weapon used in conjunction with a shield much in the same way a mace would have been. The mod author seemingly took this into consideration as the combat behavior of the weapon works with animations used for fighting with a mace. There isn't a lot to say about Maul's one-handed hammers, other than it adds a sense of realism while remaining lore-friendly and just adds that extra spark to your game. Up next, and staying in the spirit of immersion, is a brand new home for the Dragonborn, Northwind Hunter's Cabin. While there are an innumerable amount of modded homes available for download, most of them seek to add every luxury imaginable. Houses fit for the one who carries the dragon blood and, by all rights should be the Emperor of Tamriel, argue with me in the comments, but many of us like to do our playthrough living the simple life of a hunter and outdoorsman who has destiny thrust upon him or her. Well, then this would be the mod for you. It's a simple cabin in the woods, so to speak, high atop a mountain with one of the most breathtaking views in Skyrim, overlooking the hot springs located between Northwind Mine and Shore Stone. So if you're a Pelton Antler collector, or just want somewhere romantic to take Silja on that date after delivering a satchel to her parents, then this is the mod you should give a try. And since it's brand new, be sure to tell them the Dark Knight of Thrones sent you. Up next, we have another player home entry in the House of Molag Ball. I don't know about you, but especially early in the game when I'm low on coin, I need a place to store my keepsakes but can't quite afford a house. After completing the quest House of Horrors, the great Molag Ball allows your puny mortal self to take care of his house while he's gone. The only problem is there's not much to actually take care of. The mod author sought to remedy that by adding a few needed items for an adventurer like you, including a nice stone bed to sleep on and an enchanting table to run to before you accidentally sell your fire-resistant boots to that cannibal Lisbeth. While the author didn't go as far as to decorate the entire home, what was placed here, and wonderfully done so I may add, is just enough to turn this place in Markarth you usually forget about into a place where you can get some rest before heading off to tell Mawiri that the Dark Brotherhood has come. And last on our list, but certainly not least, is the highlight of the week, the Bat in Skyrim. When I first started doing Skyrim videos on YouTube a while back, I did a review on a mod that allowed you to have some Batman armor, and for what it was worth at the time, despite its flaws, was a fun little grab if you wanted to roleplay as the rich cosplaying vigilante orphan, but this brand new mod for Special Edition goes way beyond that. The mod author took the time to create a form-fitting cow which works well with slider mods, allowing you to still appreciate the time you took during character creation. There are some face mesh mods that this may not be compatible with, but that is certainly no fault of the author as you're trying to run two face mesh mods at once. I particularly noticed an issue with beard meshes. 
but please don't think I'm putting this mod down in any way. This mod doesn't just provide you a new outfit, but truly lets you roleplay as there is a quest involving Wayne Manor, a usable house, and a new player home. The quest starts by reading a journal, and from there you return to your childhood home where you were raised by your parents' loyal butler, Alfred. But, it turns out, your father had a secret, which you learn after you discover the button that opens to take you to... That's right, the damn bat cave, and this thing is glorious by the way. Not only is it obvious how much work the mod author put into this absolute gem of a mod, but it's clear they're a true fan of not only Skyrim, but the Dark Knight as well, as you can see while going through the cave and finding items that, while lore friendly to the Elder Scrolls, match up perfectly to their DC Universe counterparts. The best parts for me are definitely the large septum, aka the penny, and the giant dragon, aka the dinosaur. This mod gets two resounding thumbs up from me, so much so that I plan to do a full review in a mod spotlight on this mod alone. The only thing this mod is missing is having Ace meet me at the entrance of the cave while we begin to teach our clone son protege the ways of the bat. Guys, that's it for this list, but as new mods are constantly being made, there's constantly more to review. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our newly uploaded content. I'm James, also known as the Dark Knight of Thrones, signing out. Don't forget to give this video a like, and be sure to share with us in the comments which of these is your favorite new mod. Thanks again for stopping by, and we shall see you next time.